Hello, my name is Sarah and this is Emmy. And recently I made Hermione's Yule Ball dress and I did a poll for what Emmy's matching costume should be. Ignore the Fleur costume, that was not it. The results of the poll were that she should wear Luna's Christmas dress, even though Luna wasn't at the Yule Ball. And I thought I would make a much more in-depth video than I usually do on how I make her dog dresses. I used a silver backing fabric. I pinned the bodice pattern, which I have uploaded to my blog, to the main fabric and cut one for the outside and one for the lining. I modified mine slightly, but the half inch seam allowance is included in the blog version. Also, there isn't a note saying add one inch there. For the skirt, I cut one rectangle 24 by 10 inches. I cut four belly straps that are 2.5 by 8. Do as I say and not as I do and iron your fabric before cutting. Ironing is just my least favorite part of sewing, but it really makes a huge difference in the end. Because I'm going to have an overlay on this on the bodice here, I am going to base this to here and then sew it to the other bodice piece where if you're not going to have an overlay or something where you want the seams enclosed, you could just skip this part. And fun fact, the original fabric I ordered just arrived on December 28th, so it's a good thing I ordered a replacement for this Christmas dress. I'm gonna have to mute this because I am singing Christmas songs. It was a better color match, but it arrived well after Christmas. Oh no, I had a pin in my hand. I no longer have a pin in my hand. Oh, I found it. Since the organza frays a lot, I used a zigzag stitch to attach the ruffles. I trimmed off the excess. I also basted the edges. Yes? It's not time yet. I sandwiched two strap pieces right sides together and stitched along the long sides and one short edge. I clipped the corners, used a chopstick to turn them right side out, and ironed them flat. I serged the edges of this, but if you don't have one, you can use a zigzag stitch or a double folded hem. And ironed everything. For some extra fancy trim, I cut one inch strips from the silver mesh and ran a gathering stitch along the center. I zigzag stitched this to the ruffle, but I would recommend doing this before adding the ruffles. I made that design choice a bit too late. Emmy kept helping. Oh, okay. Productivity is not improving. I hope you're happy with yourself. I really like the silver trim there. It did exactly what I was looking for. Guess I'm done for now. Later that night, I pinned the ruffles to the skirt. I ran a gathering stitch along the top of the skirt, which is a straight stitch with a very long stitch length. I pinned the bodice ruffles out of the way. I pinned that last ruffle in place at the waistline. Well, where the bodice and the skirt meet, I'm not sure that's a waistline on a dog. And pinned the skirt, pulling on the gathering stitch and adjusting it to fit. Well, that wasn't a good sound. Eventually, I stitched the bodice and the skirt together. I did a hand stitch to sew the sides of the ruffle down, although I ripped this out and did a more invisible stitch later. I pinned the straps into place before pinning the bodice lining and stabbing myself. Ow! Some people sew over pins. I, however, have picked enough needle fragments out of my hairline, which is alarmingly close to my eyeballs, to ever want to do that again. I clipped my corners and curves one last time, before getting my poking chopstick and turning it right sides out. I did also find my Hermione wand which is made from a dowel and hot glue. This is not gonna be very good for poking, but my chopstick is. Now, normally I would iron this, but I'm a little afraid of ironing these creases out, so I'm not gonna iron this, but I would recommend ironing normally. I am, however, going to stitch some silver trim on here, so it is gonna to be top stitched down to keep the lining down anyways. I folded the seam allowance in and pinned before doing a whip stitch to secure it. I zigzag stitched one last chunk of silver trim. This is looking so adorable. I'm sure Emmy is not remotely excited. All right, so it's time to put on the elastic. No, I did not say anything about you. 
Going to put the elastic. Oh, no. You're in the way. Going to put the elastic on now so that goes on the end of the straps. Oh, but I should test fit this first. Conveniently, Emmy was already in position, so I pinned the dress on. I always pin so that my fingers are between the pin and her skin just to be safe. So this is how long I want the elastic. Oh my gosh, not elastic. This is how long I want the Velcro to be. I have this marked where this is the top part. I like to put it so that the soft side of the Velcro is facing in and the rough side is facing out, which is not great for fabric, but it is great for sensitive doggy skin. Just remember while you're doing Velcro that it has to be on the inside of one and on the outside of the other side. I have made that mistake before. I use a zigzag stitch around the Velcro. I also use a zigzag stitch on elastic, but that is not this project. And ta-da! I did the same thing for the belly strap. To finish, I tie off all the thread ends and use a needle to tuck them inside. I also made her a fleur de la cour outfit. Don't forget to watch my Hermione Yule Ball dress video next.